Hello everyone, welcome back to what will hopefully be another theatre vlog. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday the 25th of January and I'm about to head out and try and get some rush tickets. I have three options. <laughs> I kind of want to try for Dear Evan Hansen, but I also really want to see Waitress. And if not, my backup plan is the band's visit. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's been a while since I last spoke to the camera. It's currently like 25 past 11 and quite a bit has happened so let me catch you up. So I went to queue at Waitress and there was like 18 people in line so I kind of thought I'm not going to get a ticket for tonight's show. I thought if I jump around from theatre to theatre then it's going to lessen my chances. I may as well stay in one place and try and get a ticket. So I did that and I ended up chatting to the loveliest people in the queue around me. Like so lucky to have really nice people around. So it was two New York locals. Um, I say locals, I don't think they were from New York but they live in New York at the moment and a mum and daughter from Newcastle. So it was really nice, like we were all chatting. And when it came to the rush, like the box I was opening, sorry, the lighting's really dramatic, but like, I can't really find a spot where it's not dramatic. Um, so yeah, uh, they only had nine rush tickets for tonight at Waitress, like it was really busy. So I was like, oh God, no. So we stayed in the queue anyway, because we thought we've queued up. We may as well go into the box office and see what the situation is for the next like few days. This lighting is so, so bad, like nothing is good. So yeah, we did that, we managed to go into the box office and then the mum and daughter from Newcastle, Alison and Hannah, if you're watching, you're really lovely. Thank you for letting me like stay around with you for the last like hour or so. Um, I appreciate not being lonely for a few hours. Um, yeah, so they managed to get some tickets for Saturday evening's performance. And I thought, while I'm here, why not ask for Sunday and see if they've got anything? And they had a ticket for Sunday evening at $109. And like, it's way cheaper than I was expecting it to be. Like it's not rush price, no, but I have a ticket for Waitress on Sunday, so I am bloody thrilled. So sorted that out. And then I thought the mum and daughter, Alison and Hannah, they wanted to see a few more shows. So I was like, if you want, I can come with you to the other theatres and we can try and sort you out some tickets. And they were like, oh, that would be really great. So I was like their little sort of fairy ticket person. <laughs> and we went and got them some really nice seats for Hello Dolly, for them to see that. And uh, we went to inquire about like Anastasia and Dear Evan Hansen as well. Um, but they're gonna decide like in the next couple of days what they want to see and what they want to do. Then they're gonna try for the TKTS booth for Anastasia. How's that? Sorry, I keep changing camera angle, but that was just way too bright before. So then when we were at Dear Evan Hansen, I asked, I was like, oh, do you have anything for tonight? Like what's cheap for tonight? Cause obviously now I've got waitress for Sunday. That's great, but I didn't have anything for tonight. And they're like, yeah, I've got a standing room ticket at $42. And I was like, give it. <laughs> like, give me that ticket. So now I have a show sorted for pretty much every night I'm here. And it feels great. So now I'm at the Flatiron building area. Um, I'm in like Madison, Madison Square Garden. I think that's what this area is. Um, and I'm going to go to a photo shop, photography shop to get some bits there and just have a little wander around really. It's been a really successful morning. Feeling good. The last time I spoke to the vlog was like ages ago. Now outside the Music Box Theatre. I just did an Instagram Live. I say one, three. Um, the internet was really bad, but it was really nice to chat to some people on there. It's always nice to do an Instagram Live, especially when I'm on my own. So it's nice to chat to people. So I know this will go out way later, but if you were on that Instagram Live, thanks for watching. Thanks for keeping me company. 
And yeah, now I'm going to go into the theatre, which will be nice because it's really cold, so to, I will appreciate being warm. So yeah, time to go in. the opportunities I can to sit down before I have to stand for two and a half hours. Well, I'll try and sit in the interval, but <sighs> there was a couple of girls just sat on this sofa and I've literally just jumped in their grave as soon as they've left. And I think they're standing as well because they were talking about um, going to say to the, the box office that they've got like some sort of back problems or something to try and get a seat. They manage it kudos but you don't willingly go for standing room and then try and do that that's a bit cheeky but the view looks fine from standing room and it's there's got there's like a bit where I can lean on so I don't think it's going to be the worst I don't think it's going to be as bad as Les Mis to be honest and I just feel we were rock you as well I forgot about that one so I know what I'm getting myself in for I'm just enjoying sitting down while I can So with standing room, you get your own number, which is really good because I've got like my own little spot and it's actually really central. Considering that I didn't win this ticket by the lottery for the standing room, which is how most of the standing room tickets are now, it's by a lottery. Considering I just rocked up and got this ticket, still a little bit shook. I'm excited to see the show just to see what the hype is all about because I've like not listened to it fully. Um, I've tried to like, keep as spoiler free as possible and now I'm finally seeing it and I can know why everyone's obsessed over it I'm mainly just excited for that to be honest because the hype has been annoying me in a way so to finally see it now I'm excited so yeah this is my little spot 107 I'm trotting at the most unflattering angle, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, interval at Dear Evan Hansen. I've gone to get a drink. They don't do fun cups anymore. Very disappointed. Like, they're still cups, but they're not Dear Evan Hansen cups. Why? And yeah, it's good to finally see this show to see why everyone's obsessed about it. But interval report, I am not obsessed with it. <laughs> We will see if Act 2 changes this. I would just have a little 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 catch up because I didn't really get to chat much in the interval because short intervals <laughs> I thought I'd just mainly focus on talking about um, how the standing room was first of all and then obviously when I'm home and I've had the chance to collect my thoughts more I'll talk to you about the show itself just to quickly clarify again I got to the box office for Dear Evan Hansen probably at around 
10.30 maybe and when I got there, there was no one there. It was just, it was empty, no one. And went in and I said, oh, have you got anything for tonight? Like anything cheap? And they offered me the standing room. They offered the standing room at $42. And then they also said that they had um, box seats available at $150. But I'm a cheapskate. So I was like, why would I pay an extra $100 when I can just pay $42 <laughs> to see this show that everyone has raved about? So that's what I did. I was fully under the impression that the standing room was purely on the digital lottery now. Evidently that is not the case. Um, and as well, a friend of mine was in New York recently and she managed to get a standing room ticket just by asking at the box office. So I'm not really sure what the deal is there. I mean, if, if you personally, if you watching this have ever done standing room at Dear Evan Hansen and you want to chip in, do let me know in the comments because I'm just intrigued. Like, I find it really weird that they're doing standing room on a lottery, like that's odd anyway. But then yeah, to still have tickets available at the box office, I am confused. But I am grateful because obviously it was a really cheap way to see it. With the standing room seats, you have an allocation technically. So there's numbers along the back uh, wall so you know your spot. And this is another thing, I was in a really good position. I was in the middle section, like pretty much center. Like it couldn't have been better in terms of like the view. The overhang from the mezzanine dress circle wasn't bad as well. So it wasn't a really strong, like I call it a letterbox view when you've got the overhang of the level above right really in your line of view i hate that i really don't like it when um when like dress circles or even at the back of the stalls i like that so it wasn't bad at all i have to admit obviously it's not like it's not comfortable to stand for two and a half hours it wasn't the worst i've stood for les mis i've stood for rock Q, so i've it's not like i've never done it before but when obviously you're in a new city, well not a new city, but when you're in a city that's not your normal city and you're doing sightseeing and things like that, you know, it's, it's tiring to then stand for a show. But I managed to sit before the show for quite a bit and um, I didn't manage to sit in the interval actually. That probably would have helped if I'd managed to sit down somewhere, but I did not do that. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the worst. And the view is really good and it's a really nice small theatre. So it didn't even feel like I was far away at all. So it was a real winner of a situation in terms of getting that ticket. So if you're trying to get a Dear Evan Hansen ticket, I definitely recommend just going along to the box office like on the day, seeing what they've got. Because even like, if you're that desperate to see it, I don't think $150 is a lot of money to you, you know? I was looking on StubHub and I was gonna spend way more. <laughs> so compared Compared to the prices that, like the the mo like the majority of seats that are available, compared to those prices, forty two dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars is not bad at all. As well, if you're gonna leave it until you're here to book a ticket for Dear Evan Hansen, at least if you buy it at the box office, you don't have to pay all of the ridiculous fees. So that's a win, too. I think that's the main things I want to say about the the standing room position right now. If I have any more thoughts, I'll obviously put them in the main chatty section of the vlog. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on standing room at Dear Evan Hudson. Hello everyone, welcome back to the chatty section of the vlog. I've actually already filmed this once and I didn't even have to watch it back to know that it would just be a hot mess of a rant. So I thought probably best to refilm it and try and have a bit more structure and not just be emotional about it. As you saw, I went to see Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. I managed to get a standing ticket at $42, which I was very happy with because I didn't want to spend a hell of a lot of money to see this show. So $42 standing ticket. The view is actually fantastic. The Music Box Theater is a really cute small theater and I was stood at the back of the orchestra and that's the stalls. So yeah, can't complain about the view. I somehow ended up in like the middle section as well and I felt very lucky <laughs> to get that ticket. Obviously I've not been living under a rock. I know about Dear Evan Hansen. I know about how everyone has been obsessed over it. 
I like to go into shows blind if I can, meaning that if I can avoid listening to the cast recording, if I can avoid any spoilers, then I will do that. If you are like me and like to avoid as much as possible, then I would recommend not watching the end of this video because I will be discussing stuff that happens in the show because I kind of need to, to explain how I feel about the show. I just wanted to give you a heads up because I know if it were me watching a video, I would want to know if there were spoilers ahead. So I think I might start this off by telling you like the basic premise of Dear Evan Hansen. So it's obviously about a boy called Evan Hansen who, I mean, it's never fully alluded as to what he has as such, but you get the vibe that he obviously has social anxiety and also a bit of depression. In my opinion, from watching Noah Galvin's performance as Evan Hansen, I kind of got the vibe that the character of Evan falls on uh, the autism scale as well, but that's never specifically said in the show. So it's about a 17 year old boy who is not having the best time with high school. The show starts off with Evan talking about these letters that his therapist has told him that he should write because it's like an exercise to help him. So that's where the title comes from because he has to start the letter off with Dear Evan Hansen, today is going to be a good day and here's why. So obviously it's like, a positive thinking exercise and that's how the show starts with him talking about writing this letter and I'm pretty sure if memory serves correctly that he does just read out pretty much the letter that he then writes and then it goes into um, the song does anybody have a map and that's his mum singing it and also the mother of another family Connor Murphy's family so his parents um, his mum singing it um, and it's basically talking about like does anybody have a map of how to navigate like being a parent to a teenager who is either suffering with social anxiety you know you want the best for your children you want them to like have friends and have a good life and it's the same on the Murphy family side as well so Connor is quite um, an emo you'd say. Um, he doesn't really care about school, he is high, he is like ag aggressive towards his parents, um, he just doesn't care to be honest. So that's how the show is set up. We learn that Evan is having to write these letters to himself, the mothers are obviously struggling, Connor's set up as a bit of a dick to be honest. It then cuts to the school where Evan, I can't remember exactly what happens but Basically, Connor ends up knocking Evan over. He probably just got in his way, to be honest. And then Connor actually goes to apologize while Evan is printing out this letter for his therapist. And Evan has a crush on Connor's sister, Zoe. So he mentions Zoe in this letter. I think basically he's kind of saying that Zoe is sort of the only kind of saving grace in his life, really. Connor obviously reads this and is angry about it. He steals the letter, Evan is really worried that um, he's obviously gonna tell everyone, he's gonna share the letter around. And then we kind of cut forward to Evan, I think he's asked to go and see the principal and then the Murphy parents are there, I think that's how it is. And you find out that, well we find out that Connor has killed himself and we, we don't know why, spoiler, we never find out why. So yeah, in the first 15 minutes of the show, a kid has killed himself and we don't know why. And obviously because he has this letter that Evan wrote, but no one knows that at this point, the Murphy parents think that this is a letter that Connor has written to Evan. Evan then gets tangled up in this lie because obviously the parents are distraught. They want to believe kind of anything that they can. They they want to believe that this was, I don't think they even want to believe it, but they just, you, why, you wouldn't think otherwise, would you? Because the letter isn't, it isn't titled like Dear Evan Hansen from Evan Hansen. It's ended as Sincerely Me. So yeah, the parents just think, well, obviously it's got to be a, a, a letter that Connor's written. And Evan obviously doesn't tell them straight off the bat, which, could have solved everything, that it wasn't Connor's letter, it wasn't Connor's words. So Connor's parents believe that this is his suicide note. And then 
Evan ends up spiraling into this lie and says that they were best friends, he and Connor. And I mean, if you've seen any piece of imagery from Dear Evan Hansen, obviously you will know that Evan broke his arm. He's got his arm in a cast and it doesn't help as well that Connor was a dick and wrote his name on the cast in big letters. So obviously when they're in this whole meeting and then they see the cast, that's kind of solidified in the parents' mind that they were best friends. That's like the crux of the show. It's this big lie that Evan gets wrapped up in, in that he is, he was best friends with Connor. They were their only friends. And throughout the course of the show, Evan with his lies paint Connor as an actual real nice guy, which to be honest, he wasn't. He's doing this because he feels like it's comforting the Murphy family, which yes, it is. I feel like the parents would have probably split up otherwise because their marriage didn't seem too great to begin with, but it is all lies at the end of the day. So that happens. And then obviously loads of stuff happens between then and the end. This has been a long summation of the show, I apologize. But obviously at the end of the show, Evan gets found out and we'll talk more on that later. Straight off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, I did not like this show. So I feel like even from the hype alone before going in, I kind of had this feeling that I wouldn't enjoy it. I don't know why, just something about it. I was like, I just have this feeling that I'm not gonna enjoy it. And I'd heard Waving Through a Window, thanks Rachel Tucker for spoiling that. And I think I'd also heard For Forever. I'm pretty sure she sang that at her Shoreditch concert. But yeah, I heard Waving Through a Window and that was it. I think I vaguely knew that someone killed themselves, but I didn't know who. So I'm gonna go through the things that I liked about the show first because I feel like otherwise I'll just go in full on rant mode again. So even just from walking into the auditorium, I really enjoyed how everything, like the staging was in terms of the set design. I thought the set design was really cool. The show focuses a lot about social media and they, they throw that in your face kind of straight away. You can hear like notification sounds when you're in the auditorium. And then they have um, like these panels that have social media feeds on and all on the back wall and everything. And they were like, they were updating while you were in the auditorium before the show started. So I really liked that aspect of the design. I thought that was really clever. And obviously they used that in the show as well. The cast is really small actually. I think there was probably only, what, two, four, six, I'd say maybe eight people, seven or eight people actually like within the show constantly. Very small, very small cast, which was really cool actually because it kind of exemplified the online voice that was used throughout the show. So you've got Evan and then his family friend, Jared, obviously Connor, and then the Murphy parents, who I can't remember their names for the life of me. I should just look it up. I should look it up. Otherwise this is bad research review. Would you look at that? I've got a playbill to hand. Let's have a look. I think Heidi is Evan's mum. And then is it Cynthia and, and Larry? What a dad name, Larry. Cynthia, Larry, and then another girl, Alana. So, oh, did I mention Zoe? Zoe is obviously the daughter of the Murphy family. When it came to them chatting, obviously you had the school scenes, but then anything else, it was through them talking online, which is obviously very relevant because that's what teenagers do. That's what most people do nowadays. So when it came to them chatting, you'd have the stage set up as in like there was one panel and then it was Evan's bedroom basically. And so the stage was lit up just on that bit, which was really fun. And then you'd have the other panel and then the lighting on the stage and then the person talking. So it's not like they were talking, like facing each other, but they were just in their little online spaces. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really clever. Another thing I really liked about the show was some of their lighting choices. There was one striking moment in, what's the song? I think either you'll be found or the good for you. I just, I visually, I really remember it. It's when he's singing like, just let me out. And the lighting like powers through the auditorium. That looked really cool. So yeah, apart from that though, I can't understand why people are like, oh my God, this musical is groundbreaking. It's incredible. Like, I don't know, I didn't 
get that from it. Those are definitely the main things I enjoyed about the show. Now, before I go on any further, I just wanna say that I have no issue with the actors in this show. Everything I'm saying is nothing against them because I thought they all did an incredible job. So I had Noah Galvin on as Evan and I had, I think the rest of the original Broadway cast, I think, Noah is the only sort of newbie in the cast. So this is no shade to any of them. I think they are fantastic performers. I just wanna put that out there right now. I'm not hating on any individuals. The issues that I have are with the book. The music's great. The music is wonderful. Like I've been listening to the cast recording since seeing the show and I can fully understand how if you've only listened to the cast recording and that is all you know from the Dear Evan Hansen world, that's valid. <laughs> I can understand you completely loving the show from that aspect because the music is wonderful. But I've been doing a lot of reading because obviously a lot of people love this show. They're obsessed with it. They just think it's wonderful. And I was like, surely there have to be more people like me that are seeing what I would consider flaws, thankfully. My friend Jake, who obviously I saw while I was out in New York, agreed with me. <laughs> we have the same opinions. I was like, thank God, it's not just me. But there are more people out there. And I've actually been reading a few threads on the Broadway World Forum about it, which has been great. I'll try and link some of them below because the opinions and the way people have expressed them have been absolutely wonderful. It is obviously reassuring to know that it's not just me and I have been found in the theater world of people who didn't like Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. As I mentioned, I already filmed this whole chatty section and just went on one on a rant. Like it's almost funny, but I just feel like I didn't really structure my points well enough. I didn't want to script this video. I did think about it, but I thought that's not natural. I don't want to do that. The only thing I'm going to try and do is not say anything that will sound like really awful in terms of being offensive but please do know that obviously these are my opinions if you've seen Dear Evan Hansen and you loved it that's fine I don't want to have like petty comments in the comment section obviously I want to know your opinions on this show but please do structure them in a, a sensible way I mean I don't want to sound like really patronizing there but I don't just want to see comments like your opinions wrong like Dear Evan Hansen's amazing like please structure your opinions I want to know them but there has to be a point to them, you know? Okay, without further ado, let's try and crack on with why I didn't like Dear Evan Hansen. So as I mentioned, there's kind of a bit of ambiguity about what Evan has, and this is a good and a bad thing, I think. You don't wanna put labels on it, so then kind of most people can relate to it. A lot of people will have had spats of anxiety, especially social anxiety, also depression and things like that. But I feel like where I mentioned it kind of seems like he's on the autism scale or spectrum, I should say. I think with the subjects that are dealt with in the show, a bit of a label might have been good because I don't know how I feel about that being left open to interpretation. I feel like that's a bit dangerous in a way. I am not a medical expert, so I'm not gonna say any more about that, but I think it's a bit dangerous for that to be left open. It doesn't necessarily cast a positive light on groups of people. <laughs> I know that it makes sense in the story and sadly in real life that we never find out why Connor killed himself, but that does kind of anger me, mainly because I think it's just kind of brushed under the carpet in a way. Like the whole show is really about Connor's suicide because they make this thing called the Connor Project. So it's all about Connor, but at the same time, it's nothing to do with Connor. Apart from finding out that he's killed himself, no one really cares beyond that because then it just becomes Evan's fabricated lies about this fake friendship and the Connor that he's made up in his head. I feel like that does such a disservice to the character. And I, I realize, I take a step back, I've realized we're talking about a musical here and I'm taking it probably too seriously. But you know, it happens in real life. People kill themselves and you never find out why. And that is so, so horribly sad. But I feel like this sort of jumping on the tragedy for your own personal gain is one of the main things that I really, really despised about this show. But also I despised it because it's so real. You see it all the time, something 
terrible happens and people just jump on it and they sort of claim it in a way when they have absolutely no right to it. It's one of the most problematic things I find about this show because Evan lies so much about being friends with Connor and I realised that he's not done it in a malicious way as such when it starts out. As I said, he kind of gets snowballed into the lie because the Murphy parents want to, they want to believe that their son was potentially a good person and they just never knew about it. Obviously they must be feeling unbelievably guilty because their son has killed themselves and they they couldn't stop that, you know? It, it happened and I can't even imagine, like obviously I'm not a parent, but I cannot, imagine the guilt and the distress that you would feel if you were to go through that situation that must be so terrible but the fact that it literally does just become evan's fabrication it's really uncomfortable for me to to think that that it was just it's all in connor's memory but it's not because that's not the real Connor. Not to say that Connor was a good person because from what we see as an audience, like the five minutes of the actual Connor that we see, if that, he doesn't seem like a nice person. Oh, it just made me feel so uncomfortable. So there's that. <laughs> I kind of already touched on it, but yeah, that whole bandwagon of grief. In this show, they use it as a sort of positive thing because yes, they do make the Connor project and the stuff that Evan shares online is shared by millions of people and they take it in a positive way. Like there are moments, so basically Evan does this speech at I think the school and it's obviously shared by loads of people because he's saying all these positive things like, like the whole you will be found message. I appreciate the show in that sense because you see it on social media all the time, people sharing these like positive things and people saying like, this helped me, this is something I needed to hear today. So in terms of that, that's nice, that's good, that's a positive thing. It's just weird and sinister when you know it's all come from a lie. I have to say, this show is really fascinating in that pretty much all of the characters are really flawed, which makes them so real. Even though Evan is the protagonist, I personally never liked him throughout the show, really. I didn't feel like the book was giving me much in terms of things to like about him as a character. And even as someone who has suffered with not full on depression, but definitely mild depression at points of my life, I just felt kind of like, ooh, whenever that was sort of brought up, I just, I didn't find Evan Hansen to be a likable character at all. And I didn't feel sorry for him as well, which kind of makes me feel like a bad person because yes, there are some parts of this situation that weren't his fault, but it feels really weird to come out of a musical and think, I didn't feel bad for that main character at all. Not one bit, really. I thought his obsession with Zoe was really weird. And it's that whole thing of like the nice guy feeling like they deserve the girl. And then because their relationship is built on him getting closer to her by lying about being friends with Connor. Oh, it's just all really uncomfortable. I did not like that at all. Another thing I wasn't a fan of in this show, um, it was kind of in the second act, Evan has been on medication. His mum, bless her, she's trying so hard. Like, I'm gonna touch on this more in a minute. His mum's trying really hard. And so she just asks like, oh, be taking your medication. And Evan says that he's, stop taking it and he's been off it for a while. And this is while all the big lie is still happening. I just thought that is such a bad message to send out. I am all for people in these situations like with anxiety and depression and things like that. I'm all for you coming off your medication if you feel like you're ready to. But when you're told in the show that Evan is going to a therapist, so therefore you presume that that medication is prescribed, it is incredibly dangerous to come off medication like that without the help of your doctor or therapist or anyone really. Like Evan has not told anyone that he's going off his medication. That's not good. And I know it's not said explicitly, he's gone off his medication with no help, but you would presume so because so much happens in this show, like off stage in a way, like so many things, this being one of them, this being the one that annoys me the most because that's 
bad. I am so for people being like, right, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to come off my medication. And then speaking with professionals and like weaning themselves off of it. But for all accounts, Evan has gone cold turkey and wrapped up in this massive lie. It just frustrates me. That is not a good thing. <laughs> Talking of the lie, I feel like he went into it so quickly. So basically, obviously the parents and everyone presumed that this letter that was Connor's immediately after pretty much like there's not even like a second where Evan kind of thinks, oh no, this isn't a good idea. He starts talking with his family friend, Jared, about it. Then they start fabricating these new old emails to obviously kind of prove the friendship. But there's not even like a hesitation. He's suddenly just like, we need these. We need them to sound legit. Like, let's do it. And then that's kind of the whole Sincerely Me song, talking about writing these emails. And it's just really hard to feel sorry or feel anything for a character that suddenly thinks, yeah, sure, let's use this kid that's just killed himself to kind of wiggle my way into this ideal family and get a girlfriend. Cause that's how it came off to me. Like I just didn't have the time to feel sorry for him because we didn't really have any of that, you know? Oh man. So the speed in which he wraps himself up in the lie disturbed me. The whole medication thing disturbed me. The whole relationship with Zoe was a complete creep fest. I think the final point that I'm gonna touch on in this video, because I have a lot of thoughts, but I've not really, even a month later, not been able to sort of put them together properly. But one of the big things that annoyed me about Dear Evan Hansen was the way that Evan treated his mum. And this is because it's really personal for me. Evan mentions that his dad left when he was quite young. So obviously it's just been him and his mum. When you're a single parent, obviously you have to work as two parents essentially, not even just in terms of being within the house, but in terms of money and working mm -hmm. and obviously having a social life or something as well. We're told as an audience quite a lot that Heidi, Evan's mum, is working full time as a nurse and also going to classes a lot in the evening to study, I can't remember exactly what she's studying for, law, I think paralegal studies, sounds right, paralegal studies. So she's busy a lot because, you know, single parent, you have to. She's doing the work that needs to be done to keep the roof over their heads, but also studying presumably to get a better job so that she can probably put Evan through, through college that's probably the mindset that she's in but obviously Evan as a 17 year old is not thinking like that this hits home for me because I was in that situation my parents divorced when I was a young teenager and it was just me and my mum and I never fully appreciated when I was a teenager how much work she was having to do to make sure that we could keep our house on a single parent income and when it came to her having a social life I I resented her for it because I was a selfish teenager. Now my mum is dead and I don't have any time with her. So I think that I felt very bitter while watching this show and seeing what Evan was like saying about his mum and it's not like he was treating her horrifically, but there was a line in words fail about him saying that he wanted his mum to be a mum because that's all she had to be. And I swear to God, if I could go up there, no offense to Noah Galvin, but like if I could go up there and punch him in the face, I absolutely would have. Because as a teenager, obviously you're selfish. Like you just want your parents to be there for you like all the time. And he doesn't think further. I get it, I get it. You want your parents to spend time with you, but it would be different if they said that his mum worked and then went out partying all the time. But she's putting herself through law school. And as I say, it's not hard to think like, oh, well, she's she's not doing law school for the giggles. Like she's probably doing that to get a better job, to then be able to spend more time with Evan and also be able to afford him to go to a good college. That's not hard. It's not hard to think of. The way that he is like, schmooching up to the Murphy family who have got money and they've got time to spend at home. And obviously they appreciate having him around because they figure that he was Connor's best friend. So it's a piece of Connor that they, obviously they don't have Connor now, but Evan's sort of like a 
not a replacement, that sounds horrible, but you know, he he sort of fills the void a little bit. And Evan's fine with that because it's the perfect family that he's always wanted. And it's the girl that he's always wanted. And it just makes me sick. I hate it. I, I don't think I've ever felt this much rage about a show and being in the theater as I did watching Dear Evan Hansen. The way he treated his mum killed me a bit. Like it really, it really ripped me up. And So Big, So Small, which is a song that Heidi, Evan's mum sings, was so beautiful. And I think the show tries to focus a lot on like their main marketing messages, the whole you will be found. But in the show itself, you will be found is actually quite a dark song in a way because it's like <laughs> Evan Hansen, you're gonna be found out for your lie. But everyone sees this, sees it as this like really positive message, which I get it. It's it's subtle in its irony, but I don't know. I don't think it takes too much for you to notice that. Yeah, so big, so small. I think is the only kind of positive song really, even though it kind of makes me cry. But it's obviously all about things that seem so big right now will seem so small. And for, I think for people suffering with anxiety and depression, that message probably helps because I know it helped me. Like at this time right now, it's the anniversary of my mum's death. And at the time, literally it felt like my life was just pointless. And I just thought, why even bother? And now of course it's still a big deal for me. Like life still sucks at times without my mum and I would do anything to have her back. But that pain that I felt and the despair and just the sort of emptiness of thinking, why even be here? There's just no point. That doesn't feel as big anymore. And I know that it will get smaller with every year. So that whole message of so big, so small. Okay, I'm here for that. That's. That's okay. So obviously, as to be expected, the big lie is unraveled. I guess that's a way to phrase it. The Murphys find out Evan and Connor were never friends. Evan does admit that, sort of, but he's kind of forced to. It's not like he, I mean, he could have told them at the start. This is the thing that hacks me off the most. Fair enough, in that first meeting with the Murphy parents, when it was a bit overwhelming and everything, he he could have gone along with it in that moment. It would be so easy for him to say to like his mum or his therapist or, or his principal or someone, be like, they think that letter was Connor's, but it was actually mine. And the whole situation could have just de-escalated immediately. Like, I don't know, it wouldn't be a great musical. So he tells them, and then he does the words fail song. I mean, after that, I can't even remember what happens directly after that, but we skip ahead a year and suddenly Evan's like, fine. And I'm like, how could you go through all of that and just be fine? And there's a scene, basically the whole Connor project was to raise money for a, the orchard that supposedly Evan and Connor spent loads of time in uh, because the orchard had been closed down and they wanted to reopen it. So Evan meets, I think Zoe asked Evan to meet her there and they chat for a bit. Evan's saying about how he took a year out and, or he's taking a year out and he, then he jokes about working at somewhere like Home Depot or something and that he's gonna go to community college. So basically his life is exactly as it would have been if the whole Connor thing hadn't happened. And Zoe, oh, she makes this really annoying line. Something about the fact that her parents wouldn't have stayed together if it weren't for Evan and the whole lie. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You are, ex you're saying that his lie helped? Because if it were me and my kid had killed themselves and then another kid had lied about being best friends with them, I mean, they've had to grieve for their son twice. Like the son that they knew, the son they th they thought he was, the son that was imagined by Evan Hansen. I just, that line, 
<sighs> and as well, I feel for Zoe, like she doesn't seem kind of as torn up about the situation, but you can bet that she's had some trust issues from all that whole situation. And the book takes the easy way out in time travel. I feel really bad saying this. It's not that I wanted Evan to have massive repercussions because there's a bit in the show where um, I think it's when Evan gives Alana, Alana's the co-president, by the way, of the Connor Project, because she's a grief lurcher. He gives her the letter, the suicide letter. And then you, there's a segment of the show where the Murphys are getting a lot of hate online. Like the Murphy parents, people are being like, why did the parents not do more? You know from that, that if the Murphys had outed Evan, if the whole world, because they get like a lot of people following the Connor Project, if everyone knew about the lie, obviously Evan would get so much hate, he'd probably kill himself. And you don't want that happening. I don't want that to happen. But it just seems like nothing happened to Evan, apart from the fact that obviously his relationship with Zoe ended. The Murphy parents blanked him, basically. That's all he got from this entire situation. And I'm not saying that he should have been like sent to jail or whatever, but I just feel like it would help if at the end of the show, something was mentioned from him. I don't think he even mentions about any sort of therapy or anything. He says that he's doing better. I just felt really let down as an audience member. I just thought that the show displays all of these very topical things, but they just show them to us and don't really, they don't help really if if evan said that he'd been doing more therapy and you know like obviously you can see who's doing better that's fine but i don't really know how it just all seems so pointless and yeah as i say the time travel was just a cop out man this show irritated me so much and when it eventually comes to london I will see it again. I'll probably see it a few more times if the prices are cheap enough, just to sort of see if I can be less hacked off with it in the future, because right now I'm just so angry. I've realized that I'm one of the few people <laughs> that really did not like Evan Hansen, but I would like to know your opinions on the show, especially if you've actually seen it in person, because I feel like there's so much missing from the cast recording. So yeah, especially if you've seen it and you fancy giving me a well-written and thought out comment, I would appreciate hearing your thoughts. I also appreciate that I'm probably gonna get a few comments being like, oh, but if you'd seen Ben Platt in the role, you would have thought differently. I honestly don't think I would have. So just to blanket out those comments immediately. Anyway, as I said, if you've seen Dear Evan Hansen, I would love to know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, gosh, this video is gonna get so many dislikes, but if you have enjoyed it and you wanna give it a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. I normally post a lot of theater content that's more positive than this. So if you wanna hear more of my thoughts in the future, then yeah, subscribe stick around. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. What a weird way to end that. I mean, it was definitely less ranty than the previous one. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>